one twenty eight feet wide. They'll see they're all the way down. They may be spread out a half a mile, a quarter of a mile across the field, but they're always moving towards home. And as soon as they go around the corner, they speed up, okay? Here's the corner coming. And then in the uh, fall, when they go to leave, what I'll do is I will not let the truckers in the yard. I find out how many heads they need for each compartment, and I put them in a little compartment or little pens at home. And then I go get the trucker. We used to always let all the truckers in the yard all lined up, and there was more men around there, and noise, trucks running. And the first two loads would always be the heaviest, and kept getting lighter all day. Now there's only no truckers in there till I go get them. And if there is, he backs out on the road, and nothing happens till they're sitting out on the yard out there. Then he comes in, he gets in the back of the truck, opens his gate, and he stays in there. And there's a two of us outside with the bug box and uh, up the ramp. And this year we were loading them in 15 to 7, uh, 19 minutes, or sorry, 17 to 19 minutes. We were doing it when we got doing it like this. And another thing that's happening is the first two loads of the day are always the lightest, and they get getting lighter all day. But these cattle, they're used to this alley here, so I make little one-acre paddocks out here. And they stay out there all day until five or ten minutes before they're loaded. And I just go out and lift the wire and let it one semi load because you can just hold them there. And I can count how many I need to go by. Then I put the bungee cord across, lock them in their pen, and then I go get another semi load and put them in the next one. And they stay out there eating all day till the semi, till I'm ready to load them. So you, I'm not sure what it's mean. I've never figured out what it's mean in pounds, but there are way less stress on them. Okay? Okay, yeah, we've seen this cut. Keep it. Yeah, just keep going. Yeah, keep going. Okay, well, I started back, I started really realizing animal impact, just go back. I started putting up posts all the way across the field. Well, it was starting to cost me a fortune with these posts. And then I started using these port of post things and and these spring gates, and now I don't have all these posts all over the place. I just got one alley down the middle, okay? That's a port post I built, but it was heavy to carry, and it would, the cattle would knock it over where these big, these new uh, white posts that they've got, the cattle just back right off them. I don't know what the difference is, if, if it's the white and the rattling or what, they, but they just do not bother them, okay? <coughs> Keep going. Here's the jumper cable, keep going. That's the one I tried to build so that when they went around the corner there was some brace so they couldn't knock it right over, okay? And this is what I called my executive link because I had one of these little things on the other part. Now I put everything all in one so it doesn't matter when you get to the end of the fence, you, know, you just turn it around the other direction and you got the piece on there if you want, okay? Keep going. Geek flies up. Now, when you set this up, you don't want to set it if you use a bungee cord. The, the spring gate doesn't matter, you go straight across. But with the bungee cord gate, you want to set it up at a bit of an angle you, so it lands out in the fresh grass. Because if you, it lands out here, the cattle will walk over it and drag it out in the field and you won't find it for a while. So you always make it land out there. Okay? Okay, okay but this here hook like this. Every once in a while, if they hit it a bit, it, it would uh, come unhooked there. So that's the reason I'm putting that loop around there and I'm not having any trouble anymore. Okay. Keep going. See there, every once in a while it would come undone. Okay, keep going. There's what I do now. Just put that loop around there and I'm not having any trouble. And I got that above and below, but from now on I'm going to start doing, just doing a straight hole through there and have about four or five holes here so you can have it at different heights than you need it, okay? Any questions? Just There's the row, this is the alley. See there's hardly any bear dirt there. And there's all the reels, so I just come along and lift the wire and let them in each one, okay? This one's hard to see. This has got the lifter here. If this was in an alley, the lifter is there, and 
There's a one bungee there and there's a long bungee there. And you can set it so they can go across the uh, alley and then across the next side, okay? Okay, keep going, I'll just show you how it's hooked. Okay. Now this is what I started with. I put a loop up there so you can stick that in. But the next one's for the more mature eyesight, okay? It's got a bit of a hook, you can just set it on the wire and drag it back and then you can hook it. I was having trouble trying to get that V thing into the hole there, so, okay. There they go underneath. Now this is for temporary wiring, you know, those lifters will pull the temporary wire out. I just have this thing on the front for rolling up wire. I'm going to build one that folds down so the guy can ship it. But that just a pigtail and it sticks in a little screw tube there and, okay, next one. We just all one underneath out, out there. Okay. Keep going. This here, I don't do this anymore. Yes. See there, if you don't take that out of there, it lands on the hot wire. That was a learning experience, so I put that underneath so it drops on the ground. Okay. I used to have these tin cans across here. I put the red ones where the permanent fence would be if I had a permanent fence, and then I just go over here and say if I got a turn, I put a yellow can and another yellow, yellow can over here, and then I come back to an orange can so anybody can follow the cans across the field. Okay. These are for the old tags. I just turn them around and I name my paddocks. Okay. I used to do that, but I don't anymore with the ported post, okay? This here is my uh, uh, gates. I used to just throw them on the ground. Well, you couldn't dig them out of the ground after they've been there for 80, 90 days for the grass. So here's what I do next. I put that loop there and string it along the wire and then it's up off the ground all the time. Okay? This is for burying underground cable uh, wire at the at the gates, you get power from one side to the other. It's just like the for bearing my pasture pipeline, but it's for well, an electric wire, okay? And that electric stuff is hard to get off, so I heat it up with a little tagger torch and it, it just peels off like nothing, okay? Next one. Yeah, we've done this. Now, we'll oh, just back up. Yeah, the last time somebody mentioned the water bowls at one end, I would like to have one at each end. Now, I've got them every four, but I'll put them in each end and make them. So they, one time they're always going this way to the water, and then the next time they're going this way to the water, so you get more animal impact on the other end of the, of the paddle. They're not always going through the same gate, okay? This is just some of the keep going. Okay, this is one of the small paddocks I would set the, run the wires this way one time, Next time this way to get better distribution of the room, okay? This is the one I like, okay? Now this is where I'm telling you about coming into the yard. I used to come in here and turn around and go back out. And then I get a bunch in there and run them into there. Well now I can go zigzag around the yard like this. And you just fill the yard, okay? That's the same one, okay? This here is my loading chute. Uh, okay, first click it. Okay, that ramp there goes down, and I load my uh, gooseneck trailer. Okay, comes to there, the next one, and it hinges there and hangs down the front. Or sorry, it, it, it comes down and it goes out. And it's longer from here to here than it is from here to here. Okay, so when it's up there for the semi. It hangs down, and when I used to bring the cattle in, and they come off the center and go straight down, they keep running harder and harder and harder to get a bunch of mean ones because they wouldn't quit running. Now they come out down in the semi one, and then they come out flat for eight feet, and then back down. They just walk off real slow now. Uh, this setup here, I can take my cows and calves to pasture, and I run my cows on the trailer, and I don't shut the tailgate. I go get the the calves and bring them and take them over this hump here, up the hill, 
back now and the cows won't come off the trailer. And I've got to know Temple Grandin and I asked her what was going on here, why wouldn't she? She says, well that looks like a gate from inside the, the trailer, that looks like a barrier and they're not trying to come off. I got lucky, I was going to the airport, she likes to get there an hour ahead of the hour you're supposed to be there and I'm the same way. I got to the airport and I was just left checked in and I turned around and she's standing behind me. So we spent two hours visiting at the airport. How lucky could anybody get to sit and visit with her privately for two hours? Okay? Then we were in uh, St. John's and in St. John's Harbor, it's a real narrow channel coming in and but real deep. And there was a big bay in there. And uh, we were out at Signal Hill looking back towards the city and I noticed these houses with these real bright diamonds on them going up to the bank and I asked why would anybody put a diamond on the end of their house? And the guy said, well if you're down in the channel, if you stack all those diamonds on top of one another, you're in the deepest part of the channel. Well I had a trucker come in here and it took him an hour to back into my chute. So here's what I did, I put a high one here, they were throwing these away from a bridge, and the high one there, low one, and the one at the far end, halfway. So if they're like that, you're not square with the chute, but they go next, and next. Okay, see if they're all on top of one another, you're square with the chute. Now I gotta figure out some way to get them to stop when they get to the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is my bud box. Okay. Yeah, just keep going. This, this is the shoot I made. Here, it's the same thing as the idea as the Pearson shoot. So, I used the other cylinder off my uh, versatile swather. Okay, up at the top. See here, it's up there. And the mechanism there, that can be real wide for the bulls. Okay, and it'll narrow right up to the calves. Okay, that's the scissor system up the top. Okay. That's my thing for going over the fences on the quad. Keep going. This is for reeling out my wire. This here. You just hook this onto the fence and you drive across the field. And then you yeah, okay. That's it from the side view. Keep going. And I use a cordless drill and I can reel up a I don't use this cheap wire anymore, that stuff's been burnt. I use the good quality wire now. And I'm really liking this smooth stuff they got. We got some of it now, and it's some really good stuff. But use a good quality wire when you're going to do it, because it's well worth it. Uh, with this cordless drill and that, I can put up a fence quarter mile up and down in uh, 17 to, to 20 minutes. and. We've got one of these geared reels now, uh, like these ones right here, and uh, I can do it at the same time. That gear reel is as fast as the, the cordless reel, and the grandkids say that grandma screws up using this, but she usually gets it fixed, but with the geared reel she really likes it because it doesn't wrap and she doesn't have to do two things, she just turns instead of having to figure the drill out. Is she here? <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> questions, questions. <laughs> okay. Here it is here. Now, this, this here is, well, I'm reeling it up, but I have a learning experience with this. I used to need to have this here, so I went across the field by a main road, and I turned up towards, well, I went down, turned up towards the main road over there when I got to the fence. And I usually get out and hang the wire on the fence and turn around and put all my pigtails on. And the pigtails used to always be under the, my left leg while I get there and they're under the right. And I, Terry Gompart says I'm a perfectionist, but I don't think I am. I just like things to be done right. But I get there and they're on the wrong side. So I reach over the quad to grab them and put them on where they're supposed to be, and one drops out and little jams in the throttle. It's in second gear. Up the hill, me chasing it. Every time it goes over a wire, it's electrified. <laughs> it goes over the, the, 
under the road and up on the bank and pretty well stalls up and jumps away. I figure 